Hi everybody. This is an introduction to our play that we're reading first in the semester, A Raisin in the Sun, as well as a few notes on Act 1, Scene 1. I hope you first looked at the video and PowerPoint over how to read and understand drama, because a lot of the terms that I'm going to use are in that PowerPoint, things like setting, stage directions, symbol, themes, plot, characterization, all of those things I'll be talking about as we um, go through some of the highlights of this first portion of the play. So the reference in our book and where the play actually starts is page 787. And we have a small biography of Lorraine Hansberry. She is the first African-American woman to have a play performed on Broadway. It opened to rave reviews in 1959. She wrote the play at age 26, and it's actually based on events from her personal life. And let me tell you a little bit about some of those um, events. She grew up with a father who was quite wealthy, and he was a real estate developer in Chicago. She actually grew up in Chicago, and that's where this play is set. Um, her father, in 1938, purchased a home in a white neighborhood. Soon after, the Hansberry family was exposed to the rage of their white neighbors, who were opposed to their moving in next to them. Carl challenged the racist notion of restrictive covenants in a long legal battle, and it went all the way to the Supreme Court. The court found that Hansberry could sue over the covenant, that he was able to sue, that it was actually a viable case. But the Supreme Court at that point did not rule on the unconstitutionality of restrictive residential covenants in general. And we know that in 1938, um, laws were still in place to restrict neighborhoods based on race, even in the North. So this is something that was personal to Hansberry, and we will see a lot of this come up um, as the play moves on. We do know that Mama wants to buy a house. That's all we know so far. Hansberry was also active in the civil rights and very early gay rights movements. She was married, but later divorced. She died very young of cancer in her mid thirties. The title of the play comes from a poem by Langston Hughes. And that poem you can read at the very beginning of the play on page 787. The play is called Harlem. If you don't have the book yet and the version that you're reading doesn't have a copy of that poem. So you really should read the poem because it gives us a sense of what the play will be about. The idea of a dream deferred, actually in the case of the play, many dreams deferred. So dreams of all of the central characters is a central theme. And of course, the word defer means to put off for another time. So when and if a dream is deferred, move to another day, move to a future time, what happens? So the play is divided into actually six parts. Um, the first part that we read this week and we're reading um, through this weekend, if you haven't started yet and you need to catch up, is Act One, Scene One, which takes place on a Friday morning um, on Chicago's South Side, as we already mentioned, sometime between 1945 and 1959. It takes place entirely in the younger family's apartment. The scene, uh, Act One, Scene One, ends the same morning, just probably an hour or two later. The next segment is Act 1, Scene 2, the following morning, Saturday morning, and that's when they're set to receive the life insurance check. Act 2, Scene 1 is the same day, Saturday afternoon. Act 2, Scene 2 is a few weeks later, Friday night. Act 2, Scene 3 is the actual climax of the play, and that's one week later on Saturday. 
And then that same Saturday, an hour later, is the entirety of Act 3, which includes the falling action and the conclusion. So um, as I mentioned in the very first PowerPoint concerning plot, the climax doesn't occur exactly halfway through. Um, in this instance, the climax occurs in the fifth part of the play. The first Act 1, Scene 1 is actually really just an introduction. We don't even have any rising action yet because they have not received the check, but we have been introduced to all of the major characters at this point. So the characters are listed in our book, but they're not described. So this slide has a little bit of a description of each character. Lena Younger is the mother of the family. She is the matriarch and she's an occasional housekeeper for white families, although she's about 60 years old. Um, Big Walter was her husband and he recently died and left the family a life insurance check of $10,000. So although Big Walter has died and is not an actual character in the play, his presence is seminal to an understanding of the play. Then we have Walter, who is Mama's son, around age 35, who is a car driver for wealthy families. Ruth is the wife of Walter. Um, she's a housekeeper for white families and a homemaker. She's around age 30. Travis is the son of Walter and Ruth. He's about 10. And Benita is the daughter of Mama, the sister of Walter, and she's also called Benny in the play. She's a college student and she's about 20. So all five of these individuals live together in the same apartment. Um, George Murchison is a wealthy African-American college student who dates Benita and wants to marry her. Joseph Asagai is a Nigerian man who also wants to marry Benita. Carl Lindner is a white man who lives in the white neighborhood where the younger family wished to move. And then finally, Willie and Bobo are two characters who craft a plan to open a liquor store with Walter. So the play doesn't have many characters. It's not um, easy to get them all confused because it, um, the characters are really just the main four characters, plus some minor characters who still are very important to the play.